Hey everyone, this is a tutorial for making Rocket League bots in Java for offline competition. First you have to go to arlbot.org and click on the Java section. And if you scroll down here you'll see some instructions. We're going to have to install Python and the Java 10 JDK. I'm going to walk you through it as fast as I can. So here's a direct link to Python 3.7. I'll open this up and install it, but make sure you add Python 3.7 to path, otherwise you're going to waste a lot of time, and install. Okay. And we also need to install the Java 10 JDK. So I'm going to accept the license agreement, and I'm going to grab Windows installer right here. And uh, this is optional, but um, I am going to get a Java code editor, and my favorite is IntelliJ, so I'll head over there. Okay. Um, and I'll get uh, community. Okay, uh, JDK finished downloading. Let me start this installation. All right, Java 10, here we go. I think we're going to want all this stuff. That looks good. Next. Meanwhile, uh, looks like Python is done. That's great. Let me show you how you can confirm a successful Python installation. Uh, and we'll resume Java in a second. So if Python's installed correctly, you should be able to do uh, Python version. And it tells you Python 3.7. So that means we're done with Python. So continuing with Java, uh, that seems like a fine place for the JRE. I'm um, going to keep these defaults. Meanwhile, we still have IntelliJ downloading. We'll just wait for that. Uh, while we wait, I also want to point out that if you don't like Java, we also have Python and Scratch and .NET support. So there's lots of different options for making these Rocket League bots. All right, so IntelliJ finished. I don't want to mess around with the IntelliJ installation until Java is totally done, though. Um, so we're getting close. Um, now Java is a little bit tricky. We have to make sure that Java has been added to the path. I don't think that happens automatically. So what if we do uh, Java? Oh, maybe it did. Maybe that's a Java 10 thing. Okay, it knows about Java. I wonder if it also knows about Java Home. I, I guess we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. All right, so let's install IntelliJ. So IntelliJ is going to make it a whole lot easier for us to write Java code. Because um, it'll give us uh, code completion and all kinds of good stuff. I uh, don't need the JRE because we just did that. That looks fine. That should take a little while. Okay. Um, and actually, there's one more thing we have to download while that's in progress. We'll go back to RLBot and back to the Java section. And uh, let's look at the instructions. We did Python. We did Java. Um, we also need to download this repository. Um, maybe I forgot to put that in the instructions, but here's how you do it if you're unfamiliar with uh, the Git version control system. If you don't like Git, you can just download the zip like this and extract it. So I'll just extract it right here in my downloads folder, but 
you should put it in a safer place than this. And this is basically your starter project. You've got some batch files that help you uh, run the bot once you've written it. And uh, there's also, if you look in here, this is where the actual code for your bot lives, like sample bot. Um, so in theory, this should already be ready to run. We just haven't um, finished installing IntelliJ yet. Let's go ahead and test that theory. Um, well, nah, nah, one thing at a time, because it's almost done. Right, isn't it? All right, sweet. So we'll finish this. Import settings, sure. Scroll, accept, fine. All right. So what I'm going to do is uh, import project. And I am going to go, well, that's not the right place. I'll go to my home folder and uh, it's, it's in downloads is where we extracted it, right? So we'll go into downloads and it is rlbot java example dash master, I believe. And we will, let's see, select directory with this stuff. Okay, I think we want this directory right here because it's got build.gradle inside of it. Okay, and we're going to import from external model, Gradle. Next. Um, oh, this thing looks unhappy, man. <laughs> I hope yours doesn't freak out like this. Uh, I think all these defaults are okay, which is good because I can't see a dang thing. I'll hit finish. And in theory, our project should open up and be properly configured right off the bat. So it says uh, syncing right now. What, it, what it's doing is this Gradle build. Um, I guess I'll allow access here. What it's doing is it's looking inside this file. And um, I guess the main most important thing it's doing is looking at these dependencies right here and downloading them and setting them up. Uh, and this is where all the um, the core Java logic lives is off-site and it has to get downloaded. Looks like it finished, so let's take a tour. Um, so in here in the Java folder you have your sample bot. And uh, hang on just one second. It looks like we can't resolve symbol. I think we might have to change the language level of our project. Oh, no, we have to find the SDK. Okay. Um, so we need to configure uh, the location of our JDK. So the home directory is, where do we install it? Uh, probably in program files, Java, JDK 10. Make sure you pick JDK, not JRE. Okay, let's see if it's happy with that. Okay, it's no longer red. It's indexing, that's a good sign. Meanwhile, um, I really prefer the dark theme because I can't even see right now. That's better. All right, well, this is indexing. Um, let me just give you a quick tour. Uh, so this is called uh, your sample bot. You can change this code as much as you want. Um, the important part is this process input method. It, uh, it takes in the data packet, which holds all the information from the game, like where the cars are and where the ball is. And you can start to do logic on it. So I'm figuring out, okay, where's the ball? What's my car? Um, 
and based on that information I'm going to figure out the steering so that I drive towards the ball and put it into this controls output object um, and whatever you return here gets sent back to the game automatically by the framework and it'll make your car drive okay so let's see if we can get this to work um, let's go ahead and open up Rocket League and the next thing we're going to do is execute um, we'll start with this run framework GUI batch file and uh, in theory that's going to install a few more things and also open up our user interface uh, one convenient way to do it is to pop open the IntelliJ terminal but you could also do it from uh, PowerShell or something if you felt like it so I'm going to do run framework I'm going to hit tab one more time we'll do GUI and you can see that it's um, doing some work it's going to install some stuff uh, including our Python RLBot package right here. That's a pretty crucial part. It's also downloading a few other dependencies that, um, for example, PyQt5, which is what our user interface is based on. Hopefully it won't take too much longer. Um, and you're going to be running this a lot of times in the future, uh, every time you run the bot, but it won't take this long. It's only taking this long because it's the first time set up. Um, and once we have this uh, popped open, what it does is it will... Oh, here we go. You can see the UI. This configures what bots are in each team uh, based on this config file. So it's going to be one Java bot on blue team versus another one on the orange team they're running based on the same code that we have in here so if it works right they're both going to be ball chasers okay um, I've got Rocket League open and all I'm going to do right now is click on run um, activated and then there's one more thing we have to do after that uh, because these are Java bots, we also have to go ahead and uh, run this project because this thing will be expecting to talk to a Java process. Um, I think we'll see that in just a second. Oops. Hmm, I didn't actually say anything about it. But you'll see that uh, these bots are not moving yet. And that's what we expect. So to get them to move, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, run this. I'll go ahead and use the debug mode. Um, another way to do it that you could use is to do uh, run bot.bat. And one of the advantages of that is it will install all the Python stuff if you don't already have it. But once you have it, um, my favorite way is to use this debug thing because that lets you uh, set breakpoints, which is very useful. Okay. So you can see that it is uh, doing some work here. Uh, we'll allow access again. Oh, and look in the background. We've got uh, <laughs> the bots are going officially. Let me get to player view. Cool. Um, so these are our ball chaser bots. You can make them a whole lot more complicated than this. This is very bare bones. Uh, they don't know what team they're on. They're just chasing the ball to their heart's content. Um, so this is the output that we got from starting up the program. Um, gateway server started on this particular port. Um, so that means that uh, this Java process is acting as a server. Um, and this other process that we still have running in the terminal uh, connected to it. So it says connected to Java Gateway. Um, if we decide to stop this or recompile it then over here it'll say hey uh, error occurred while trying to connect and uh, I think what we have is the bots going in circles because they've lost connection 
and they're just repeating the last instruction that they got. Um, but we can leave this running. If we go back to debug and say, I want to start this up again, um, then the bots will start behaving themselves again. Let's go take a look at um, how this debugger can work. So if I set a breakpoint right here, the code will stop executing. Uh, the game continues, but they're going to be going in circles because it's no longer communicating. And uh, once we're in the debugger, we can see all the values of these variables. So, for example, we know the ball position now is exactly this. Uh, if we have any bugs in our code, we can step through um, with these nice buttons, or we can figure out what the hotkey is. In this case, it's F8. Uh, and you can see how these variables change according to your logic. Uh, so we can see that because the steer correction number happens to be uh, negative, then our steering is going to be 1, and we'll put that into our controls output, and that will get returned. Um, so that means that this car is about to turn to the right. Um, I'm going to remove this breakpoint and hit play to resume, and now our bot is back to behaving itself once again. Um, let's show how to change the behavior Let's go backwards. So I'm going to make this a negative one. And then I'm going to restart using this button right here. All right. And now they're both going backwards. Because remember, uh, both bots are controlled by this same code right now. All right. And now to show you some more stuff, it's not just steering and throttle. Um, I'm going to change this back to 1. Oops, not 11, just 1. Um, we can also do dot with lots of things. We can do boost, we can do jump. Let's do boost. We'll set... Um, so dot with boost kind of makes it uh, automatically true. Um, or if you wanted to make it false, I believe you can do false like that. We'll just do true or just let it default like that and rerun it and let's see if they start boosting and going forward yes they do and of course they're still chasing the ball all right so that's uh the basics of how to make your bots tick um so you can recompile like this whenever you want you're going to want to leave this running um when you're done with this uh, you should be able to hit any key and it'll uh, exit so it's shutting down um, and then when you're done with this, you probably also want to uh, stop your Java process like that. Now everything's shut down. Um, the game is still running, uh, but nobody's home. Okay, uh, so that's basically how Java works. Um, if you have questions about any of this or you want to get help learning how to program, you should come to our Discord server, which is, uh, if you go back to rlbot.org, you can see this link right here. Um, if I hit connect, it'll say, oh, you already have Discord, let's continue to it. Um, and uh, this is our Discord server. So we got um, this learn programming section, we got general, we got issues and bugs. Looks like somebody has an issue. Um, all very helpful people will help you get going. We also have a tournament coming up very soon. Uh, you might be a little bit late for this one, but we'll, we'll definitely do more. All right. Um, and just one final note. Uh, these bots do not work online. They're not for crate farming, so please don't even try. Uh, but it's plenty of fun just to uh, compete with each other in tournaments or, or even just to random stuff like going for aerials or dancing around, whatever. So I hope you enjoy this, I hope you get working smoothly, and uh, I hope you join the next tournament. It's going to be a lot of fun. See ya!